You know him, I know him. The one teammate that has deadly allergy to closing doors. And let me tell you, there is no worse feeling than getting deep because someone was too lazy to close some doors. And since I don't want you guys to continue unwillingly running grab donation charity anymore, it's time to share my base lockdown circuit which has stood the test of many wipes and server crashes. So stay tuned to find out how to protect your loot and sanity at the same time. Hey guys, Hyperion here and let's get started. First of all, we will need any power source that gives us one rust watt of power. And yes, one power is all that we will need to control up to 48 doors. Here I am using just a wind turbine and branching out single rust watt of power to a large battery. For the most basic door circuit we will need just a switch and a door controller. By hooking up the battery's output to the switch and passing it through the input to our door controller, we just made the simplest door controlling circuit possible. If the switch is activated, it will start sending power to the door controller as as soon as the switch is flipped back off, it will cut the power resulting in the door being closed. The two big downsides are that if the switch is turned on, it keeps constantly draining our battery and it will also open all the closed doors first. We can fix this opening issue by wiring the pass-through of the door controller into its own closed side input. This way now, if we turn the switch on, the closed doors won't open and only those that are already open will close. The negative aspect of battery drain still remains and it's not really intuitive having to press the switch two times in a row. So let's fix that. By adding a branch on top of the switch, setting it to 1 and connecting its branch out to the switch off signed input while keeping its power out as a connection for our doors, we have just made the switch automatically turn off split second after it was turned on. So now we only need to press the switch once to send a short pulse which closes all the doors. We will of course want more than a single door to be closed, right? For that we will place a single branch next to every single door while keeping the settings default. The main wire instead of to the door controller will now go to the freshly placed branch and we will branch out power to the door controller. Power out is gonna be passing power to the next door setup in line and we will repeat this setup for every single door we want to have control over. Now we are able to manually close all our doors with just a single click of a switch. But don't be mistaken. This is just a very humble beginning. This is all cool so far, but it lacks any automation aspect, so let's look into that. How about we make the circuit able to be controlled by the Rust Plus app on top of automatically closing drawers every few minutes. Does that sound any interesting? So let's make a simple clock circuit which controls our auto-closing mechanism. We will be using a smart switch from now instead of the regular one so we can trigger a base lockdown from our phone. On top of the previous setup we will need 3 more branches, timer and a blocker. After we are done wiring it up like this, it's time to choose how long of a delay we want to have between each auto-close. So let's put in 30 seconds just for demonstration purposes. In a real wipe I would not go under 10 minutes because then it can become kinda annoying. Power gets distributed from our battery through those two branches to a timer, blocker and a smart switch. All we need to do now is to trigger the timer for the first time and wait 30 seconds for all our doors to close automatically. This cycle will now be on a loop, resulting in closing all the doors every 30 seconds or any amount of time which we had set the timer to. We can also always use the manual trigger in game or on the Rust Plus app to trigger the door closing manually without having to wait for the timer. When the timer triggers, it starts sending power that blocks signal going to its own toggle and also turns on the switch. The switch starts sending power which triggers door close and shuts the switch back off. As soon as the timer runs out, it stops blocking the toggle signal resulting in the timer activating again and repeating this loop. This timer circuit will also automatically activate after server restarts or crashes. As I mentioned previously, this circuit can support up to 48 doors per large battery. But if you need more, adding additional batteries is a real simple task. All we need to do is placing one additional battery providing it with one rust watt of input, then combining both battery outputs via root combiner and that's it. But what if you need more than just one place to be able to shut all doors from? Don't worry, I got you. Let's pretend that those buttons are spread around our base where we would like to have access to them. By combining their outputs using OR switches, we are combining them all into one single line. Now we need a blocker in front of our auto-closing circuit where this single line will go to. 
And boom, now we have multiple places to manually close all our doors. A really big added benefit of this setup is that after each manual close the automatic clock will reset. This ensures that scenario where we just closed all doors isn't followed by a new door close few seconds after. It may not seem as a problem but trust me. Imagine, you just opened a door to peek outside. Just to get hit by L9 while surviving with 1 HP. Only to realize that the doors right behind your back has closed and you cannot hide. This isn't really ideal scenario. This could already be considered pretty nice circuit. But wait, there's more! Since we are all about the hands-off approach after a circuit is done, we can't forget to include some automatic triggers. Not every time you will be at your base or even online to press the button manually. In those cases, we can use basically any way imaginable to trigger our base lockdown. From pressure pads, sensors and lasers, all the way up to turrets and SAM sites targeting an enemy. For that, we will be using a wireless RF pulse circuit. It consists of two branches, timer, blocker, RF receiver and a small battery. This small battery won't be charged at all. Its default power will give us about 10,000 pulses, which is more than enough to last the whole wipe. As it comes to the automatic ways to trigger, it's real simple. All that's needed is an RF broadcaster that's set the same unique frequency as the RF receiver. And of course this broadcaster is connected to an output of a detection item of our choice. Real simple. So as we can see now when a laser detector here gets activated it starts sending power to the RF broadcaster which will trigger our remote circuit. This remote circuit serves the same function as the buttons we have set up previously. In short, it translates a continuous signal from RF broadcaster into a short pulse which resets the door closing timer resulting in all doors closing. If we have multiple automatic triggers close to each other, we can also use just one RF broadcaster and combine all those trigger outputs into one line using OR switches. Same way as we did with the buttons. If you are getting at least some good information from my videos, tell it to all your friends that need it. And if you think I suck, tell it to me. Also, if you have some questions, requests or needs to educate me, feel free to type them in the comments. And in case that would not be enough for you, I have a Discord server that's linked in the description. Anyway, as we can see here, all the automatic triggers work perfectly. From sensors, turrets to explosive detection. But how does the RF circuit even work, you may ask? The small battery is sending power to a branch that's set to 1 and a blocker which passes the power to an RF receiver. Branch out is sending one power to the timer. When the RF receiver detects a frequency coming from our detection system, it starts passing power to a branch that's set to 1. This particular branch then sends power to the bottom blocker of our door closing circuit. That's the same place as the buttons. And its branch out goes to the toggle of the timer. So every time the RF receiver passes power through, it activates the timer which will block the power coming to the RF receiver itself. This way we are creating a short pulse to trigger our door close and preserve a lot of battery power. Timer also has additional function of delaying the next automatic trigger by the set amount of time. This will prevent potential raiders from continuously trigger your auto close circuit making the movement in your own base hell. I suggest setting the timer to a minimum of 30 seconds so it doesn't feel too annoying. Here, as I'm demonstrating, even if certain trigger gets activated multiple times or more different triggers would, the next auto close won't happen sooner than in 30 seconds. If it would be set to low number, let's say 1 second, the raiders could abuse it to continuously be closing all doors in front of your face and that doesn't sound like much fun to me. So I highly suggest having it on 30 seconds at least, if not more. Anyway, this base lockdown circuit is completely useless if you would lose all your power the first minute in a raid. So if you don't like having your batteries blown and losing all your turrets, check out this video to prevent it from happening and level up your game. And remember guys, it sucks to suck. And I will see you in the next one.